to our local summary of diabetes at the Cedar Centre. So hopefully all of you have been able to go on to Bertie Online and been able to complete the doctorate um, work on that and been able to send through the certificate through to us. If you haven't sent the certificate, at the end of this uh, video we'll also have the email address that you can send that through to for us. So just as a bit of an introduction, my name is Karen Mackey, I'm the Diabetes Specialist Dietitian at the Cedar Centre and Bev Tuttle is the Diabetes Specialist Nurse who's also going to be in part of the video as well. Good day, my name's Bev, I'm the, the Diabetes Specialist Nurse. Okay, we just wanted to go over the um, new way of uh, showing HbA1c. So we're all used to percentage, that's the old school way. We're also now getting readings in millimole per mole, um, just to clarify. Um, we've got a difference, we can see the zone of joy between six and a half and seven and a half percent, and that now equates to 48 to 58 millimoles per mole. So just when you see these readings, just to clarify what the difference is. Um, I think on, on a lot of your documentation, you're still getting both versions. So it's just familiarising yourself with the difference. So we're going to talk a bit about the carbohydrate counting. So in the Bertie Online, there was a lot of information about carbohydrate counting, so I'm not going to go over all of that again. What I am going to do is just mention some of the things that we do locally, just to make life a little bit easier for you. So first of all, we don't use CPs locally. So you'll notice when you did Bertie Online, they referenced carbohydrate portions or CPs. So this is something that we used to use many years ago, but now we sort of work with just grams of carbohydrates. So you don't have to do all the conversions and everything. So when you're calculating your carbohydrates, just don't worry about converting or anything, just keep it to grams. Um, most people prefer to use things like the carbs and cows. I quite like it because it's visual and it's a much simpler tool to use. One thing just to be mindful of is that when you're using carbs and cows, it is a 2D picture. So sometimes it is useful just to weigh your portions, just to check which portion size you're using. It's very easy to estimate the wrong one. So I do, I do suggest you get out those scales, dust them off and just do some weighing every now and then just to check that your calculations are still right. So with MyFitnessPal, this was referenced in Bertie Online, it is a nice tool, it's, free, it's a free app that you can download onto your phone, it's predominantly used if you are trying to lose weight, so there's a lot of information that you can put in about what your weight loss goals are, how many calories you're aiming for, so there's a lot of other information which not everyone's going to want to use. If you're using it for carbohydrate counting, I would suggest you look for these green ticks. So anything that's got a green tick is basically has been verified by someone, so we know that it's that's safe to use. Without a green tick, you don't, you can't guarantee that it's it's safe to use. Anyone could have inputted that information, so it may not be accurate. So locally, we have done some carbohydrate demonstrations. So if you go onto this this YouTube clip, it basically has a number of different clips on the different tools that you can use for carbohydrate counting. This is just a bit of an example of one of them. Um, it covers things like using scales, carb carbs and cows, food labels, um, using your own sort of um, carbohydrate lists and that. So please feel free to go onto that. It's more of a visual ha um, hands-on guide to, to carbohydrate counting. So I'm just going to go through a bit about the carbohydrate ratios. So another thing that we do locally is that we keep the unit of insulin as the constant. So we refer, relate everything to the, the unit of insulin. So what we suggest is for one unit of insulin, how many grams of carbohydrate would you need to match it? And obviously we know everybody is different. There's different sensitivities, different insulin resistance. So your ratio is going to be specific to you. So there are a number of different ratios. So something like one unit to 15 grams, one unit to 10, one unit to seven grams, one unit to five grams. So the main thing is that we use that unit as the constant and it's just the grams of carbohydrates that we would adjust based on what your requirements are. So how do you apply these ratios practically? Basically because we work with the total amount of carbohydrates as grams, all you would need to do is calculate your total amount of carbohydrate for your meal and then divide it by whatever your ratio is. So just as an example, 70 grams of carbohydrate using a 1 unit to 10 gram ratio you would say 70 divided by your 10 grams would give you seven units of insulin for that meal. However, if you are using a one unit to seven gram ratio, for that same meal, you would need to divide it by seven. So 70 divided by seven gives 10 units of insulin. So that's how we use it. It's quite a simple way. Just get used to your, you just have to get used to your times tables really. Um, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense.
So just a quick reminder of sick day rules. It's really, really important that you have a plan when you become unwell. So at the Cedar Centre, we have sick day rules applicable to your um, insulin regimen, whether you're using multiple daily injections or whether using a pump, okay? The fundamentals really are, before we go into any detail, that you do lots of testing, you have the facility for testing for ketones, you administer insulin, you keep hydrated and you keep testing. Okay, so the sick day rules for somebody with type 1 diabetes, you're not feeling very well, you start testing your blood sugars. We have the capacity for ketone testing, either capillary ketones, I can, you can pick up a metre from the CS centre if you don't have one, or urinary ketones are fine. So you're looking for how much ketones you have. Um, you basically follow the algorithm round. So you are testing for ketones, and you are giving yourself additional insulin. If your ketones are plus plus or above 0.6 to 1.5, you're giving 10% of your total daily dose as rapid acting insulin. If it's greater than 1.5, you're giving 20% of your total daily dose. Just keep following the algorithm round. Again, it's about testing, testing for ketones, testing your sugars, keeping hydrated, okay? If you are doing all of this, your numbers are not coming down, your ketones are not, um, diminishing, um, you start throwing up, you can't keep fluids down, you've got to come into A&E, it's an emergency and we need to get that treated. So it's the difference between coming in, getting a sliding scale, being rehydrated and going home or an ICU admission. Okay, so it's really important we keep on top of elevated numbers, test for ketones and just additional insulin. The same rules apply when you are using um, sick day rules on a pump. The only exception is that you're actually using a pen, okay? You always have to have a plan B. The reason that your sugars might be elevating might be that your pump is not actually working. So what you're gonna do, if you've got elevated blood glucose levels, you're not feeling particularly well, you're gonna test your blood sugars. If they're elevated, but you're testing negative ketones, you are going to um, use your pump to correct. If your levels don't start coming down within an hour, you need to get your pens out, all right? If you have any ketones present, you're gonna use a pen to do your correction. You're gonna increase your basal rate by 30% if your ketones are 0.6 to 1.5. What you wanna do is if the, after that initial correction um, or you have any concerns that your pump's not delivering is make sure you change the set and troubleshoot your pump. If you feel that the pump is not delivering, you're gonna need to use long acting insulin from your pens also, all right? So it's very much about assessing whether the pump is the issue or whether it's a reciting problem. We don't wanna rely on the pump if we don't feel it's working. So the emphasis is very much on making sure that your, your tech is working. If it isn't working, use your pens. So again, if, you're, if your ketones are above 1.5, you're gonna increase your basal rate by 50%, assuming your pump is working correctly, and use a pen to make your corrections. You're gonna be using an extra 20% of your total daily dose of rapid acting insulin. It's about testing, it's about checking, it's about correcting. So you're constantly gonna be testing for your blood sugars and your ketones. You're gonna try and keep hydrated. If you are doing everything that we've asked you to do, but you're still levels are not coming down or you start to vomit, you need to come in. We need to get you hydrated and we need to sort out your sugars, all right? So it's very much about testing, checking, testing, checking, trying to keep hydrated and make sure that if the pump is part of the issue, you have an alternative means of getting insulin into you. So these are our contacts if you need to get in touch with us at all. The diabetes specialist nurses, which include Dawn, Bev, Alex and Henry, can be contacted on this number. There is also the email address that you can contact them on if you have any queries. I'm the diabetes specialist dietitian, Karen Mackey, and you can get in touch with me most efficiently, probably via my email address over there. If you've got any questions regarding sending in your certificates, if you want to get in touch with us around Bertie Online or this video that we presented, you need to contact us via CEDA Education. So it's that email address there.